come to yoga, Tuesday afternoon yoga. Looking forward to having a nice relaxing today's um, yoga is going to be a little more restorative, which basically just means we're going to spend a little bit longer time in poses. And it's going to be a little bit more about relaxing and breathing. All right. So we can get started. Um, what we're going to talk about today is the pelvic floor and specifically about pelvic floor overactivity. So um, a lot of times when we have people come in, um, they think that their pelvic floor is weak and sometimes that's not always the case. So we can have leaking and pelvic pain as a result of too much tension in the pelvic floor um, just as often as we see it due to leaking. And so today's yoga class, we're going to focus on stretching the muscles that are related to pelvic floor tension, and we're going to talk about how to breathe into your pelvic floor. So basically, um, we want to stretch the inner thighs, the abdomen, and the glutes. These can all contribute to holding too much tension in pelvic floor. Um, and a lot of times, we think about holding tension in pelvic floor as like we would hold stress in any other muscle. And so we are called breathe because that's one of the best tools that you can use to work on this. And so we'll review our belly breathing, but then we'll give some more cue in today that's specific for how to relax your pelvic floor when you breathe. What does that even feel like? Um, and you might not end today's class like feeling perfect at that, but it's more about starting that process and like that awareness of how your breath affects your pelvic floor. And so even if you don't have pelvic floor muscle overactivity, it's still a good thing to learn how to do to connect the core as a whole. So our core isn't just our tummy, our pelvic floor and our diaphragm, which is our breathing muscle, is a big part of that too. So using all three of those things together gives us um, a better like way of working on our core as well. And so for today's class, what we're gonna use, we will have two blocks and then optional to use a yoga strap. So there's, we're gonna do one pose where the strap might be beneficial, especially if you feel like you're not super bendy. So I will give you a minute now to go grab two blocks and a strap. And if you don't have blocks too, those are, that's okay, those are optional. You could even use like, um, like a tub, like a small tub or shoe box or anything that you have nearby so I'll give you a minute to grab those check and see how many people we have on here with us today wonderful nine of you oh my gosh hi guys so happy to have you here I know my voice gets a lot louder when I come closer to the camera so I'll try and not be super loud excited to have you guys with me it's fun Super fun. Archie's here too. He's that's my dog. He's hanging out in his crate, just happy as can be. Alright. I also feel like a restore class fits well when the weather is like the way it is right now, kind of gloomy, kind of rainy. So those two always work nicely together. We're going to start um, laying down on our backs. So whenever you are ready, and you, however you feel comfortable here. So if you don't feel comfortable laying on your back, you can lay on your side. You could take child's pose. Um, and you can like move around a little bit if it doesn't feel good. But this is where we're going to start working on what it feels like to breathe into your pelvic floor. So start first by just connecting to that abdominal breathing. So getting your breath out of your chest and into your tummy. Big breath in. And picture the air not just going forward, but all around that 360 abdomen, even into your low back, into the mat.
And now what I want you to start to visualize, and I'll bring the model back for this, what I want you to start to visualize is that these muscles here are your pelvic floor, they're the bottom of your core. And so think of this bowl-shaped muscle sitting in your pelvis and that you're breathing all the way into those. So as you breathe into your tummy, your tummy is like a balloon. This is the bottom of the balloon. So breathing all the way in, into those pelvic floor muscles. So thinking about sending your air super deep. Sometimes we use the cue, which I love this on, to breathe into your knees. So breathing so deeply that you're sending that air all the way into your knees. Try a few breaths air going all throughout the body. And picture those muscles lengthening towards your feet with every inhale. So inhale is where we really emphasize the relaxing because that's when that air has a chance to go down to pelvic floor. So breath in, picture muscles lengthening, and exhale just letting it go. Breath in, lengthen those muscles down towards your feet. Exhale, letting it go. You can also picture openness in your pelvic region and letting your hip muscles relax, letting your glutes relax. Every breath, like your pelvis is melting into the mat. Big breaths in and letting it go. So big breaths, big full belly breaths, but not super effortful. So not like a big effortful, like pushing your stomach out, but just continuing to focus on only sending your air to your tummy and not your chest. And being able to relax your body. We get the best pelvic floor relaxation when the rest of our body can relax. So I like this because I can relax my head, but if you feel uncomfortable laying on your back, you might find child's pose to be a really nice place where you can rest your head on your arms and totally let go there. We don't want to feel like we're holding ourselves up when we work on breathing into pelvic floor. Good. So that's intro to breathing into your pelvic floor. And we'll do more of that later on but for now bring your feet wider apart and then let your knees gently fall to each side getting some gentle movement in low back and you can take this as a constant movement you can pause at the end if it feels good and the width of your feet is totally up to you you can be as wide as your mat even wider closer together we're getting that low back moving. Take a few rounds here. See if you feel anything change as you go. Notice what you're feeling side to side if there's a difference. If you can go further one way. Good. All right. And now, we are going to come to hands and knees and we're going to start with some cat cow. So double check in this position that your knees are under your hips and that your hands are under your shoulders. And then we're going to start by looking forward and then looking in, rounding in, letting your head and neck go. And then adding the breath. So inhale, look forward. Feel a big stretch on your tummy. That's one of those muscles we're going to target today. Exhale, round in. And the breath does matter. So pairing that inhale with cow pose helps get an extra stretch in the tummy muscles. Inhale, look forward. And you can take a little side to side. Sometimes doing like a side bending through your whole back here helps target one side of the abs. Exhale and round in. And then inhale, look forward, try that side to side. 
So bending your right side, extra stretch on left side of abs, down to the middle, and then bending your left side, stretching the right side of abs. And just notice, exhale, round in. Notice if there's one side that's super tight. Inhale, look forward. A lot of us walk around clenching our abs throughout the day much more than is necessary. It's always good to keep a pulse on how tight our abs are. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk our hands forward. Um, butt is gonna stay where it is. So butt stays over um, knees, but you're walking your hands forward and then just sink your chest down to the ground and let your forehead rest. This might feel like a big stretch like in your armpits or in your upper back. This is a good reversal of the rounded position that our upper back is in all day long. And then gently walk your hands back, lift your head up and press through your arms as you lift up. And now we are going to go into down dog. So tuck your toes under, lift on up. And then here, feel that nice stretch in the back of your legs. Pedal out the dog. I'm looking to see if my dog perked up when I said that, but he didn't. If I said the W word, he might have a different reaction. Good. And now we're going to start with left leg. So lift your left leg up towards the ceiling. This is called three-legged dog. And then step that foot all the way forward. Okay to use your arms to help get that guy there. And now we are going to come into warrior one. So warrior one is where your back foot is turned out like a 45. And then your front foot is forward. Um, but if this feels bad to you, just turn your toes forward, okay? So we can tweak that back foot position to make it comfortable, and then reach your arms up towards the ceiling. So here you might feel a stretch in the back of your leg, like in your calf, or in the front of your hip. And the work that's happening here is to keep your left knee tracking over for your second toe, so don't let that front knee cave in. And then keep your core engaged here, so that your ribs aren't flared towards the ceiling, but that they're more down so that your tummy is stacked, your core is stacked instead of flared open as you reach your arms up overhead. Good. Now we're gonna come into warrior two. So opening on up. So in this one then, back foot is at a 45. And then um, it can also be straight just depending on what feels best in your hip. And then front foot is forward. Again, same work happening here of left side glutes, your buns, working hard to keep that knee over second toe. And then arms come up so that they are just over your legs. So when I first started yoga, I was like intrigued by the fact that there was like multiple warrior poses. And you do warrior two so much. And I was like, I can't wait to find out what all the warrior poses are. Like, tell me now. And so I thought we'd do all three of them in one sequence. So now we're going to come from warrior two into crescent pose. So just pivoting that back foot forward. So like, feet aren't quite in line with each other. They're not on the same track, but very close. And then we're gonna feel a nice stretch on the front of this hip here. Optional to bring your arms up overhead. Good. And then we're going to step forward, so feet are together, and we're going to come into warrior three. So warrior three, um, I'm just stepping back so you can see me, but you can stay where you're at. Warrior three is um, where we're going to stand on our left leg and hinge forward, like picture the letter T. So a lot of us might not get there, that's totally fine, but the full expression is that your leg is in line with your upper body, and we're balancing on left side. So stand on your left leg, shift the weight over, and feel your whole left leg light up. So outer buns really turned on, and then start with hands at your heart center as you 
lift off that right leg and start to kind of teeter forward and think strong back leg. So this back leg, the back of the leg is working hard to keep it straight. The front of your leg is working as well. Nice when you have a wall. And then optional once you get here to reach your arms out forward. So again, similar things are working here to keep ribs from flaring. And then come on out of this. Um, when I work on these, sometimes I'm having a day where you could get into it and hold it really well. Some days it's more, okay, just fell, getting back into it, just fell, getting back into it. Just keep going. Um, every day is different. All right, and now we are going to um, go into a deep squat. So this is where you might want to block. Um, and basically, what we're going to do with this is put it where our butt might land, and then bring your feet wide, and then sit on the block. Okay. So once you're here, then, and um, remember that like with all things, if this doesn't feel good, um, you can definitely do more of like a squat, so just in, in the air without being totally lowered down. And if you're doing that, you might need to take a few breaks from it because it will just be hard to hold it for very long. So check in on all the muscles inside your legs here. Bring your hands to a prayer position and optional to use your arms a little bit to push your legs out. That's going to give like an extra stretch on your inner thigh muscles and just breathe here. Check in on where your breath is, if it's in your chest, and see if you can re-send it to your tummy. And then think about relaxing your glutes if you're resting on a block. And then send that air all the way down to pelvic floor again, so check in on that. Think about in this position, so gravity helps us. Think about relaxing those muscles all the way down towards the mat. Every inhale, feeling more relaxation. Good. All right, so we're gonna slowly come out of this. So bring your feet a little closer together, lean forward, and then we're gonna get that block out of there. And now we're gonna use both blocks so we're going to come into a low lunge with left leg forward. So stepping right leg back and then set your back knee down. And then you're going to have these kind of by your here, like forward, but almost halfway. And then we're going to transition between this forward lunge where you're going to feel a stretch in here and then coming back into a half splits. So rocking back, sitting your booty back, straightening your left leg and feeling a stretch on the back of your left leg. Taking a moment there and then coming forward again into the lunge, stretch on right hip. Sit back, straighten left leg. And you can play around with like the position of your foot. So if you kind of point your toes to the right and up or to the left and up, you're going to hit a little bit different part of your hamstring. Coming back into the lunge, and when we come into this lunge, we're a little more lifted. So chest is more forward here, and then when we come into the half splits, we're more rounded. So sometimes people like this without the blocks. Sometimes it's nice to turn blocks on what we call a higher setting. And so optional, like, so many options, whatever you feel like your body needs with today. Good. So last hamstring stretch here. All right. And then now we're going to put our blocks back. Um, step that leg back. So both legs are behind you. And then from this tabletop position, we're going to come up into down dog. But so what we want to do when we're going to down dog from tabletop is walk our hands forward first. And so just notice how you feel here without moving your hands and feet once you get into down dog. Sometimes you might 
do it without even thinking about it. So that's why I say that, but a lot of times we want to shorten up our down dog. Um, but really, for most of our bodies, we want them to be for more of a full plank position. So it might be a little longer than you think. Again, pedaling out here. Stretching your heels towards the ground. And then this time we're gonna start with right leg. So reach that right leg up towards the ceiling. Feel how super strong your left leg is. And then step this leg forward. And then we're going to come into warrior one on this side. So lifting up, um, shorten your stance a little bit. So warrior one isn't quite as wide of a stance as warrior two. Again, that left foot is turned in at about a 45 degree, optional to have it straight forward. And then arms up overhead here. Feel those right buttons turn on to keep that knee straight ahead instead of caving in. Core is stacked, not flared open. And then we're now gonna open up to the left. So finding warrior two here. So back foot can be straight ahead or a little turned in. Try both of them out and see which feels best in your left hip. Our pelvis here isn't straight ahead, but more at this neutral 45 degrees. I find this pose to be really empowering, so think about how awesome you are here. All the amazing, strong things you've either done already this week, or that you have ahead of you today or this week. And now pivot that left foot forward, coming back into crescent. So returning to the lunge here, feeling this nice, super nice hip flexor stretch on the left. You can bring your hands to your hips as well. Good, and now we're gonna step this left foot forward and then do warrior three on this side. So same thing of, I like to like get on my left toes as I do this, because then I still have some support, but to really turning on right side butt, whole right leg really fires up, front of your leg turns on, everything is strong and engaged, and then now you're gonna bring your hands to your heart center and let your upper body go forward as your leg comes back behind you. Left leg is super strong, foot is flexed. Leg is straight, pressing your back knee up towards the ceiling and just slowly hinge forward. There is no rush here. And if you fall out of it, start over again. So there's no warrior four that I know of, but there's, there's all of them. Good. All right, and when you're ready, we'll come on out of that. And then, so we'll do Malasana again, which is that deep squat. So if you like the block, go ahead and grab that. You can do this without a block. You can get into this squat and hang out here. Um, I think that the, if you are feeling lazy, it is nice when you use a block, or if you want it to feel more rested in it. So I think depending on what you're doing, it's easier to focus on like the stretch aspect of inner thighs if you have something to rest on. If you want it to be more active and work your glutes to keep knees out like that, you can do it without a block. Um, sometimes we have days where we just like the more restorative postures and that's totally okay. Breathing again here. This is a good reminder too of how frequently we get um, into breathing in our chest, which it's natural that that would happen during a workout. We're working harder, especially with those balancing poses. Good, all right. And then now we're going to go back into that half splits, low lunge sequence. So this time we're gonna have our right leg forward. So blocks about where you want them to be, kind of mid front of your mat. 
and then right leg forward, step that left leg back, and then set your back knee down. So propped up on the blocks, however you would like to have them, and then start by lunge forward, stretch in the front of your left hip, and then sitting back, stretch on the back of your right leg. Good, so nice right hamstring stretch. And kind of sit your booty off to the right, and a little more to the left, and feel how that gets into different areas. And then forward into the lunge, chest up tall. Sitting back, hamstring stretch here. Good, low lunge, sit forward. Sit back, hamstring stretch, and this is our last one here. Good, all right. And then we are done with these. We're gonna get those out of the way. And then now what we're going to come into is um, a wide-legged forward fold. So bringing legs nice and wide, and then just um, kind of dangle forward and grab your elbows. So start with a little sway side to side. And just notice what you're feeling. can reach your hands down to the ground and even um, bring your palms like by your feet and like you're gonna walk your palms back behind you so towards that back wall fingertips pointing towards the back wall and just walk them that way a little bit and then hold for a little extra hamstring stretch here Kind of rocking into and out of the stretch. Good. Now come on out of that, bring hands back to under your face. And what we're gonna do is we're going, we're gonna focus on each side. So step your legs a little bit wider, and then we're gonna turn left foot out as you bend your right knee and sit over towards your right side. So we're focusing really on left inner thighs here. If this feels bad to have your knee this bent or hip this bent, you can do more of like this situation or even hands on your hips here so that you're less like deep into it. But if it feels good, go ahead and settle on into this, um, kind of balancing on your toes here, just depending on your flexibility. And then again, playing around with the angle of your, like where your toes are pointing. So when toes are straight ahead, and like my body is forward, that's gonna be more inner thighs. And that's one of those muscles related to the pelvic floor. So when we have tense inner thighs, that can um, contribute to tense pelvic floor. And then if you turn your feet up, then you're gonna get a little more of the back of the leg and the hamstrings. Okay, we're gonna slowly ease out of this. So use your arms, kind of lean forward and push through your right leg. And we're gonna come on over to left side. So settling in here and feeling what your right side needs. Does it need more of that inner thigh stretch or does it need more hamstring stretch? We're going to come back to the middle, come on out of this, and then find a comfortable seat. So this can be sitting cross-legged, you can sit with a blanket under your bum, um, or sitting more like on your knees if that feels better. And we're just gonna start with a stretch over to the right side. So let this bottom hand, your right hand, 
Really reach out as you reach your left arm up overhead. Optional to look up towards the ceiling. And here, really breathe into that left side. Good. And you can go as deep here as you want into this stretch. So if you want to go all the way to where you're kind of resting on this arm, that's okay too. Good. All right, gently come out of that. And now we're going to go into stretching the left side. So reach that left, or stretching our right side. Um, left arm out, reaching this right arm up. Might notice a big difference side to side. Sometimes we'll like judge sides of our body like, oh, my right side. All my problems are on my right side. But just try and like be like, hmm, interesting. It's my right side. Or maybe it's not your right side. Just like noticing and acknowledging instead of judging. Um, let's next, we're going to come into the seated twist. And so we have a few options here. One is that you're going to have your right leg bent and then just bend over this way. Another is that you're going to cross your leg, right leg over, and then bend your left leg. So we're going to the left and you can either hug this leg or you can hook your left arm over and then right hand fingertips are just resting here on the mat as we stretch to the right. Just breathe into it and gently here see if as you breathe, if you notice after being in it for a few seconds, if there's a little more room. Good, and then gently unravel from this here and we'll get set up for the other side. So again, our options are this, um, with left knee bent, and then just turning over this way, or bending your right knee, and then crossing your left leg over, and then hooking this elbow around. Looking back behind you, adjusting your hand as you need to. might feel a nice stretch like in your left hip, in your upper back. Good. All right, we're gonna unravel from that. And then now we are going to come into child's pose. So whichever version of child's pose you like, kind of two main versions are knees together or knees apart. So big toes always together. Optional to put like a pillow under your bum or even under your chest and tummy. And we're gonna breathe here and we're gonna reconnect to that breathing into pelvic floor. So start by belly breathing, feel your tummy expand into your legs. Again, think about that cue for breathing into your knees. Sending all that oxygen all the way down. Really let your head, neck, and shoulders all melt here. Picture openness in your pelvic floor. This is a good position for that. Okay, 
feeling that belly breath all throughout, even if none of these cues maybe are specifically speaking to you, just continue that breathing into your tummy. Stretch out onto the tummy and lay lower all the way down. And then here we're going to come into sphinx pose. So legs are just flat, toes are back of the feet, back of the feet, top of the foot is on the mat. And then bring your hands out in front so that your elbows are under your shoulders. So we're just going to prop ourselves up here, but we don't want to be slouched. So think about it's still active, you're still thinking about drawing your shoulder blades together and down on your back. So lifted there, nice long neck, not craning back, but looking kind of at the horizon level. And then here we're getting a good stretch on your tummy. So breathing here. Just feeling the benefits of this posture. And now we're going to roll onto, start with rolling onto your left side. And then this is the part where you might want a strap or a belt, and that is just to get into this quad stretch. So if you can, just reach back for that leg um, and kind of laying like, I'm not totally on my side, I'm like a little bit forward so that I'm not on that like bony part of the hip. Um, but if you can't reach your leg, you can grab a t-shirt or a scarf or something and just loop it around your foot and then use that to um, pull your foot up towards you, but keep your knee in line with your bottom leg so that you can get a nice stretch in the front of your hip, but also in the front of your leg. So we don't wanna be like out here. We wanna be back here, nice stretch. Wonderful. And now we'll roll all the way to the right side and get that left quad stretched out. So reaching back or switching the side that you have your strap on. And checking in on left side. So now we are going to transition to laying on your back. So take your time getting there. And then here we are going to do figure four stretch. So start by crossing your left leg, right leg over your left leg, and then reach up and grab behind. So grabbing your left thigh if you can. You can also just grab like pants from the front. Um, if this feels hard, you can also leave your left foot on the ground if you feel enough of a stretch there. And then try a little rocking side to side. And then we're going to do our twist with leaving our legs in this position. So if you don't, so like I don't have any room over here, so I'm just going to scoot a little bit. But let your legs fall over to the left in this figure four, and then just feel Feel that. If you don't like it anywhere, you can always come out of it and just do a regular twist, like where knees are stacked. But try this on, see what you think. And then open up to your right side. Good, come back to the middle. And we'll switch sides. So crossing that left ankle over option to lift this leg up and grab behind. Yeah, stretching out our glutes. One of those groups that tight glutes can a lot of times go along with tensiony pelvic floor. And again, 
again, a little side to side movement here. Extra little movements like this are always optional. I like the feeling of kind of going into and out of the stretch, but holding in it is totally okay too. Good. And then now setting down right foot and letting your legs fall to the right side as you open up to the left. You don't want to feel any like pinching here. So like a new kind of stretch, that's good. Pinching, not so good. So um, if you don't, if you're feeling anything bad, just go back to that leg stacked twist. Kind of the traditional one. Good. And then back to the middle. And now what we're gonna do is half happy baby. So we're gonna start by grabbing your right leg. So bring your, grab your right foot, like you're bringing your knee towards the ground. And then left leg is bent, and it's almost like you're pushing your foot into your hand while you're simultaneously like pulling your leg and knee towards the ground. And so you should feel this stretch in the upper inner thigh. Good, and now we'll switch sides. So bring your left leg up and grab. And so when I do this, my elbow is inside my knee, but my hand is on the outside of my foot. And then it's like your foot is facing the ceiling, like you're about to put a stamp on it, but your arm is kind of drawing that, drawing that leg towards the ground to give you that good inner thigh stretch. Right leg is just kind of keeping you balanced here. It's okay though if you roll a little to your left when you do this one. Good. And then back to the middle. And then um, we are just going to take a few breaths in the legs up the wall as our last pose. And so I want to show you guys how you get into that. Um, so you want to scoot all the way over to the wall, like facing this way, but our legs are going to be here. So then once you're like this, then you're going to lay down and then swing your legs up. And then you got to kind of scoot and turn and ooch. And then your butt's against the wall, your legs are against the wall, your heels are on the wall, and you can just chill here. So bring your hands to your tummy and just breathe here for our final Shavasana. I'll bring you out in a few moments.
wiggle your toes, your fingers. Feel, feel the energy coming back. And then now, to get out of this, just kind of walk your feet down the wall until your knees are bent. And then just kind of, we're gonna kind of scoot upper body to the left and then roll to the right. Use your arms to push yourself up. Okay, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, next week, we won't have this, but um, check back in with us the following week. We will always put it up here in advance so you'll know. Um, but thank you so much. And if there's any special poses or postures that you want to do next time, just leave that in the comments or themes. Um, and if you love this, check out Read at Home. Um, our new membership site, it's so beautiful and has an amazing assortment of exercises on there. Um, $19.99 a month, which is such a steal. Like all of these videos are um, cured by us. They're those tiny little things that really help you get the extra benefit out of your workouts. Um, and you can find that by going to our website, breathedsm.com, and then going to the products tab. But I'm excited to see you again next time, and thank you so much for joining me today.